In this section, we are going to learn about the different components of an airplane. The power plant is located at the front of the plane encased in the cowling. The fuselage is the main body of the plane that houses the cabin, cockpit, and baggage area. This is the area where the passengers generally sit. The fuselage is the central component where the other main parts connect. The wings are generally attached on the top, middle, or lower portion of the fuselage. Wings are designed so that as the air flows around the wing, it produces lift and allows the airplane to fly. There are two types of control surfaces attached to the rear or trailing edge of the wing. Closest to the fuselage are the flaps and further out are the ailerons. The flaps extend out from the fuselage to about the midpoint of each wing. When extended, the flaps lower simultaneously to increase the lifting force and drag on the airplane. Flaps are primarily used on takeoff to create extra lift and when landing to allow the plane to descend at a steeper angle with lower air speeds. The ailerons extend out from the midpoint to about the end of each wing. They move in opposite directions to create aerodynamic forces that cause the airplane to turn. The ailerons are normally connected to the yoke by a series of chains, cables, bell cranks, rods, and pulleys. When you turn the yoke to the left, the left aileron moves up and the right aileron moves down. The opposite is true when you turn the yoke to the right. The empennage, also known as the tail of the airplane, consists of the vertical stabilizer or fin and the horizontal stabilizer. These two surfaces act like feathers on an arrow to steady the airplane and allow it to maintain straight and level flight. The rudder is attached to the vertical stabilizer and is used to move the nose left or right. You will also use the rudder in combination with the ailerons to turn the plane correctly. You operate the rudder with your feet using the pedals located in the cockpit. When you press the left rudder pedal, it moves the rudder to the left, which will cause the airplane to turn to the left. The elevator is attached to the rear or trailing edge of the horizontal stabilizer. During flight, the elevator is used to make the plane pitch up or down. There are different varieties of horizontal stabilizers. Some are all one piece. These are called a stabilator. The whole stabilator pivots up and down on a central hinge point. Trim devices are small tabs connected to the trailing edge of one or more control surfaces. These are used to help lessen the workload by aerodynamically helping you move a control surface or maintain the surface in a desired position. They are generally located on the elevator. Trim is controlled from within the cabin with the use of a wheel or some airplanes have an electrical control. A stabilator normally uses an anti-servo tab to provide you with more control of the airplane. Without the anti-servo tab, a pilot may over-control the airplane or move the control yoke too far to obtain the desired result. The anti-servo tab also functions as a trim tab to maintain the stabilator in a desired position. They are controlled in the cabin the same way as a trim tab. The landing gear is made up of three wheels. Two main wheels are located on the fuselage and a third wheel is located on either the nose or the tail of the fuselage. Landing gear with the wheel located on the rear of the airplane is called conventional or tail wheel. Landing gear with a wheel on the nose is referred to as tricycle gear. Nose wheels are usually steerable or free castorine. Steerable nose wheels are linked to the rudder rods and cables. You will use the pedals to steer. Landing gear can be classified as retractable and fixed gear. Retractable gear is designed so that the plane can be more streamlined as the gear can be retracted into the structure of the plane during cruise flight. Fixed gear always remain extended.